So risk adjusted discount rate is equal to risk free rate plus risk premium. Expected return you are expecting from that particular project, you will get that return. The cash inflow will be constant in few years. So that situation is called as risk free. For high risk project, the risk premium will be high and for the low risk project, the risk projects will be lower. Hello everybody, I'm Divya, Assistant Professor from Department of Commerce and Management, lecturing Vidya from First Grade College, Mysuru, the Temple of Excellence. I take this opportunity to welcome you all for the session 3 on your chapter 2, that is your risk analysis and capital budgeting. Moving forward, the agenda for today's discussion, conventional techniques. So in the previous class, we have discussed about the other two techniques, that is your statistical techniques. Uh, in that statistical techniques, we have discussed about the probability, calculation of standard deviation, calculation of variation and coefficient of variation. And we have also looked into the problems of calculation of coefficient of variation and the different standard deviation problems. In today's class, we'll be discussing conventional technique. What is conventional technique is all about and you'll be able to know what is risk adjusted discount rate technique and what is certainty equivalent approach and the problems based on that, how the risk can be adjusted by using this technique. Moving forward, Conventional technique. So in conventional technique, we have two different other techniques to be studied. So what are those two different techniques to be studied? The first one is risk adjusted discount rate. So suppose you take up a project. So let's say 50 lakh project. So in this project, the cash inflows up to certain level, up to certain years, it is risk free. Whatever the expected return you are required, expected return you are expecting from that particular project, you will get that return. The cash inflow will be constant in few years. So that situation is called as risk free. So up to certain years, it will be risk free. The outflow, whatever the cash inflow, whatever we want will be in a constant constant rate but later what happens up to certain next level the cash outflows and the cash inflows will become the returns what we are expecting will not get so the investors expect more return to take up the risk so this has to be addressed with the technique called risk adjusted discount rate so here we'll be studying about the two concept one is risk free and the risk that we are taking for that the investors expect the extra return that is called as risk premium so what is risk premium what is risk adjusted discount rate everything will be looking in this particular slide so risk adjusted discount rate is a first conventional technique so let us look into that the use of risk adjusted discount rate is based on the concept that investors demand higher return from the risky projects as i have told you if you if you are investing in certain project that is 50 lakh project up to certain years the cash inflows are constant you get the return what you expected that is risk free but after certain years due to various variables and the factors the cash inflows might not be as expected by the investors as expected by the company so investors expect higher return that is risk premium they expect an additional premium amount to take up that particular risk so that is your risk adjusted discount rate technique so this concept uh, in this the particular investors expect more return on the higher return on the riskier project. The required rate of return on any investment should include compensation for delaying the compensation plus the inflation equal to risk-free rate of return. So for delaying the 
return what we are expected the investors all the organization the company the person who takes up the risk also will expect the return higher for taking up the riskier project so that is risk premium so that has to be adjusted so with the help of a formula and then calculate what is the net present value moving forward there is a formula for this so net cash flow n cf that is your net cash flow your k stands for risk adjusted discount rate i is the initial investment so how to calculate the net present value under your risk adjusted discount rate by net cash flow divided by your discounted rate risk free rate as well as risk premium will be given in the question so by taking up that you will get the amount with that risk adjusted discount rate by referring the pv table at rupee 1 so you will get the risk adjusted discount rate percentage with that value taking up from the table you have to subtract from the initial investment then you will be able to find out the net present value so this is all about risk adjusted discount rate technique so it is a conventional technique of risk analysis so as i have told you my dear students risk analysis is very important to analyze because all the capital budgeting decision is taken based on certain assumptions because future is uncertain we doesn't know future and the assumptions might be wrong sometimes so there will be risk that is associated in each and every year that the project taken so for that particular purpose we need to ascertain and analyze the different techniques of your risk analysis and then find out by adjusting the discount rate by assigning the probabilities by analyzing the standard deviation and the variation we need to calculate the net present value expected net present value moving forward conventional technique again a risk adjusted discount rate is a sum of risk free rate plus risk premium so how do you calculate the risk adjusted discount rate so in your question or in your examination if they ask you how do you calculate the risk adjusted discount rate you need to calculate as risk premium that is your risk free rate risk free rate will be given in the question and the risk premium also will be given in the question the summation of that if you do it you will get risk adjusted discount rate moving forward the risk premium depends on the perception of risk by the investor of a particular investment and risk aversion of the investment so the risk premium what percentage they expect the investor expects so that risk premium depends upon the investors as well as the risk taken by a project moving forward so risk adjusted discount rate is equal to risk free rate plus risk premium so how do you calculate the risk adjusted discount rate risk free rate plus risk premium moving forward let us understand in detail what is risk free rate and what is risk premium is all about risk free rate it is a rate of return on investment that bear no risk so risk free rate means what that particular project doesn't require any of the additional risk that particular project doesn't have any of the risk the investment the return in that return we have a assurance there is no risk of uncertainty that is risk free rate for example we have government securities yield a return of 6% and there that bears no risk if you are if you want risk free securities you go for government securities such as the gold bonds if you want to purchase it is all risk free so government securities yield a return of 6% in this case 6% is what risk free rate risk premium so it is a rate of return over and above the risk free rate expected by the investors as a reward of bearing an extra risk so for bearing an extra risk you expect extra premium amount extra amount that amount is called as risk premium we have a example here for high risk project the risk premium will be high and for the low risk project the risk projects will be lower so it depends upon the 
project so that is your risk free rate as well as your risk premium moving forward let us take up the problem and understand what is your risk adjusted discount rate is all about how we need to calculate the net present value so let us read the question an enterprise is investing 100 lakh in a project so a person a enterprise a firm is investing in a project how many lakhs 100 lakhs the risk free rate is 7 percent so up to certain years the return is expected what we are expected the return is certain so the risk free rate is how much 7 percent but after a few years the risk premium expected by the management that the 7 percent for taking up the extra risk is 7 percent the life of the project is 5 years following are the cash flows that are estimated over the life of a project so cash flows that have been estimated during the life of the projects up to certain years the return is expected that is risk free rate is how much 7% but at the few times risk premium is there that is 7% so these are the expected cash flows for the particular year calculate net present value of the project based on risk free rate and also based on risk adjusted discount rate technique so first what we need to calculate we need to calculate the net present value of a project and based on that we need to calculate the another one is basis of risk adjusted discount rate so two things we need to calculate here that is your net present value on risk free rate and you need to calculate the risk adjusted discount rate technique based on the answer moving forward the net present value of cash flow for all the years by discounting the cash flow at 7% is calculated as below. So where do you get this discount rate? As I have told you my dear students, we are following the PV table factor that is at rupee 1. So it is uh, available in the textbook that is I am Pandey textbook, your Khan textbook. So you can refer those last page of the textbook, you will get that PV table at rupee 1. So at the particular year with that percentage, if you refer the table, you will get the answer. So number of years is given in the question, we have taken the number of years as well as the cash flow which is expressed in lakhs, we have taken the cash flows as well and we have taken the discounting factor. What is this discounting factor at 7%? It is nothing but your risk free rate at 7%. For year 1, 7%, it is 0.935 and for year 2, 7%, it is 0.873 and for year 3, 7% discount rate that is 0.816 and next 0.763 and for the 5 year that is your 5th year the discounting factor at PV table at rupee 1 will be 0.713. Moving forward present value of cash inflow how did you get this multiplication of this. So if you multiply 25 into 0.935 the present value of cash flows in lakh will be 23.38. Similarly we have done the calculation for all the years and the total of present value of cash flow is the summation of this is 244.34. With that what we are doing we are deducting the initial investment that is 100 rupees the expected net present value what we have got is 144.34 so initially we have discussed the formula right the same formula we have applied here net cash flow divided by this is your uh, discounting factor minus initial investment we have converted that into table and we have solved here Years cash flow discounting factor we have multiplied with that and we have got the present value and with that present value we have summarized it and we have got the total present value of cash flows with that we have deducted the initial investment and with that initial investment we have got our net present value. So this is how we have to calculate the risk adjusted discount rate technique. We are calculating net present value for risk free rate 7%. Now moving forward we need to calculate the risk adjusted discount rate technique with risk premium 7%. 
Now, when the risk-free rate is 7% and the risk premium is expected by the management 7% to calculate the risk adjusted discount rate, initially only I have told you the formula. What is the formula? Risk adjusted discount rate technique is equal to risk-free rate plus risk premium. If you do that, you will get your answer. So, the risk adjusted discount rate is 7 plus 7%, it is 14%. So, years. We have taken number of years is how much? It's 5 years and the cash flow, the same cash flow given in the question we have taken. Discounting factor at 7% plus we have taken at 7% again. So what is it? It is 14%. 7% plus 7% it is how much? It is 14%. So 14% for year 1 it is 0 0.877. So, 14% year 1 discounting factor, how much it is? 0 0.877. Similarly, we have done for all the years and we have multiplied cash value as well as cash flow as well as your discounting factor at 14% and the value we have got is how much? 199.79. With that, what is the initial investment given in the question? 100 lakh. So, 100 lakh, as we have taken 100 lakh, deducted 99.75 is the net present value. So, this is how you calculate your risk adjusted discount rate when you are taking up the risk premium as well as risk free rate that is your 14% discounting factor. Nothing to do with it, just uh, whatever the calculation given, you have to put it in a tabular form that is your years, cash flows given and the discounting factor which you are referring from the textbook that is your PV table factor 1. This is the discounting rate that we have got. So, different rates, different value will be put in. So, that value we have taken if you multiply discounting factor into cash flow, you will get what? You will get your present value of cash flows and the summation of present value of cash flow will be how much? Total present value of cash flow. With that, if you deduct the initial investment, you will get your net present value. This is under risk adjusted discount rate technique by using risk premium as well as risk free rate. So, this is how you calculate risk adjusted discount rate technique. Moving forward, we have certain advantage and disadvantage. Where we will be having advantage on the other hand, it will be having certain disadvantages as well. So, it is easy to understand. It incorporates risk premium for the discounting factor. Since we are adding certain percentage of amount, we are expected with the risk. So, since we know the risk, the return also will be known to us. So, the certainty of return will be known to the investor. Limitations we have. Difficulty in finding risk premium and risk adjusted discount rate because as I have told you, capital budgeting decisions is based on certain assumptions and that assumptions and what risk we are calculating that might not be accurate for the project because the real market situation will always be changing. It is not constant, it is always changing. We can take up an example of inflation, deflation. If these factors, the selling price might vary, the profit may vary for the company and there will be certain regulations from the government and all these factors or the variables will be affecting the cash inflows to the investor, to the person, to the company, to the organization. So, it is difficult to know those things. Through NPV, net present value can be calculated but it is not possible to calculate standard deviation of a given project. We can calculate the net present value. So, more the standard deviation, more the risk. Less the standard deviation, lesser the risk. So, standard deviation is very difficult to calculate under the risk adjusted discount rate technique. So, that is it for today's class. In next class, we will be discussing the other technique of conventional technique that is your certainty equivalent approach and we will also discuss the problems based on certainty equivalent approach. So, smile is the biggest jewel you can wear. Keep smiling people. Thank you so much.